Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Bible Illustrated Hands. Hands. Uh, today's question comes uh, from Jay with a beard. His question is, uh, I know that many people saw Mother Teresa as a virtuous woman, but is she really as bad as the critics say? Uh, thank you for, for your question, Jay. Uh, you know, there are a couple of facets that I need to address before I start answering this question. Uh, first of all, uh, it is a bit of an irony that uh, Orthodox people will tend to bend over backwards to deflect any criticism of Orthodox saints, but when it comes to uh, criticizing Catholic saints, then it is, uh, you know, they will hold no punches and even often reiterate uh, some criticisms that really are undue to those people. And of course, they will also spice it up with additional accusations of prelast or spiritual self-delusion. Um, now, the reason why Orthodox tend to act this way is because that, sadly, they do think of saints as idols, and I do not mean that uh, in the sense of worship, which is the or uh, which uh, us Orthodox definitely do not do, but some people think that, uh, you know, uh, disagreeing uh, or even criticizing a saint is a taboo, it is a sin, and so on. Well, it, it isn't. Saints are people, just like us. Uh, they can mistakes, they did make mistakes, uh, and uh, the issue is uh, saint uh, slowly and gradually becomes a saint uh, at the end of his or her life. At the time when we might read uh, about their life, you know, they may not have reached uh, the, those heights of perfection. Yeah, so... Uh, it's a it's sort of a uh, it's sort of a gray area, but yeah, with uh, uh, with one uh, notable exception, no saint is immaculate, no saint is sinless. So uh, I do think that actual criticism, except when it comes to dogma, can be leveled against them. Not that we ever need to do that, because why would we? You know, <laughs> so. Um, there is also an issue of the fact that modern saints, whether Orthodox or Catholic, uh, can be, um, are under much more strict, uh, strict uh, scrutiny than the saints of old, you know, uh, because everything is recorded now. Uh, you can go through tons and tons of material, whereas in the old times, uh, one would practically only have tradition and the, the local veneration of a saint. Today things are not uh, uh, things are not as easy, and all of the controversies regarding Nicholas II and his canonization basically stem from that. You know, uh, I have no doubt that he would be uh, canonized controversialist if if he lived like uh, three plus hundred years ago with the exact same life and the way he died, but because we live in the modern time, in the time of, uh, you know, typewriters and uh, keyboards and uh, cameras and everything, of course, that much more strict scrutiny will be applied to a saint, whoever he or she is. Um, before I start with this video, I need to emphasize that I haven't read any books on Mother Teresa, even the critical ones by Christopher Hitchens, Hell's Angel, uh, I haven't watched documentaries for or against Mother Teresa. Uh, so an anything I say in this video is simply my opinion on uh, what input I have had on her during my life. But I invite uh, any one of you who uh, has some personal experience or uh, some knowledge, please share it in the comments. Um, so... Uh, the first thing uh, I, uh, I want to say is, and I have to repeat this from the previous video, uh, I actually, uh, I actually uh, know an Orthodox missionary who's very big in Serbia, uh, who got converted to Christianity thanks to Mother Teresa. Uh, his name is Klaus, uh, Klaus Kenneth. Uh, he is an Orthodox Christian from Germany. Uh, he was, uh, his mother was a pious Catholic and a very evil woman, I'm sad to say, and I'm sad to say that piousness and evil can coexist and they make little concoction. Uh, she was left in an, uh, he was left in an or orphanage where he was severely abused by a member of clergy. 
which led to him having not so stellar opinion of uh, Christianity. Uh, after leading a very turbulent life, he tried to find some uh, sense of purpose in Buddhism and he really got far into Buddhism. He traveled to India and there he actually met Mother Teresa. I do not remember how he got called to a mass, but there, she, uh, there he met an elderly woman and for the first time in his life he actually felt love. And uh, that little woman, uh, Mother Teresa, she told him, Klaus, every human being has the initial of the Mother of God inscribed on both of his or her paws, and that is the letter M, which is, you know, very nice. And that initiated his conversion to Christianity and ultimately into Orthodox Christianity. Uh, he, will, uh, he, is a he was a spiritual child of uh, Sophrony of Essex, uh, or even St. Sophrony, I think he was canonized recently. Um, and uh, I, uh, I do not think that there ever was such a love uh, of a spiritual child towards a spiritual father, myself included. <laughs> you know, uh, when that man speaks of St. Sophrony, it is, it is something out of this world. So, uh, that is the sole person that I know personally who encountered Mother Teresa. Um, also, uh, I want to discuss the critics of Mother Teresa. A fair number of them tend to be secularists and of course that they will accuse Mother Teresa of things that are completely secular. For example, um, that uh, she opposed abortion and contraception. Well, wow, 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 what, a, what an amazing, uh, what an amazing, uh, you know, claim. Of course, she, she, she was a pious Catholic woman, of course, that she was going to oppose those things. Um, one thing that she is uh, that is often leveled about her is that she didn't resolve the poverty of those uh, who were her wards. Again, this is not something that uh, she was out to do. She was out to provide the poorest of the poor, as she called them, uh, to get uh, to have some semblance of medical care and some love in their disease and very often in their death. Um, I do not know if people actually think that missionaries of charity means missionaries of giving people money, <laughs> but you know, charity can be a lot of good, uh, a lot of different things, providing basic med care, providing sense of purpose, providing sense uh, and uh, sense and purpose uh, in the conditions of abject and utmost poverty. You know, so uh, I believe that uh, people who accuse her that well she didn't resolve their poverty have a very uh, limited view of uh, what love is. Um, so, the, um, a lot of people that were helped by her order did receive a lot of uh, care that would definitely would have been denied to them if it weren't for, sisters of mis uh, for uh, the Sisters of Charity or Missionaries of Charity. I apologize if I... Um, called the order, something that it's not called. Um, also, uh, this is something that I have mentioned just a bit ago. Uh, some have accused her that she's a lover of suffering. Um, now, this is something that comes from Catholic theology and I won't go too deep into it. However, um, uh, they basically accuse her that she tried to teach these people to love poverty, to love their suffering. And while we have a form of this in Eastern, in Eastern Orthodoxy, it is a bit different in uh, Roman Catholicism. However, I would go as far as to say that it is um, far healthier for a person that won't be suddenly uh, saved from poverty to learn to, accept for what, uh, to learn to accept it and in a way appreciate it than to simply drown in despair. Of course, we would all love for people not to be poor, but sometimes that is uh, that is not a possibility. And uh, what will you say to a, to a person that is that will be poor the entire life? You know, uh, after all, our Lord was poor. We do not preach prosperity gospel. We don't. We can't say, "Oh, Lord, uh, Lord will make you rich." He might, and he does make people very rich in grace. But as for material goods, you know. 
uh, not so often and very often, and St. John Chrysostom says this very often, uh, in, practically, uh, in practically all times, uh, all wealth is uh, unjust in this or that way. So there is that. Sorry, I had to write notes because this is a huge, uh, huge, um, a huge uh, subject. Um, uh, now, uh, there is um, also uh, the thing with her critics, at least big ones, even the ones who, oppo uh, and these critics were called to testify against her during her canonization process. Um, I do have uh, a feeling that they never really interviewed people who were uh, given care by the missionaries of charity. Um, and while that criticism uh, of their treatment is maybe, uh, uh, is maybe proper, we need to remember that this is a woman who simply went to help this poor with what little she had and that international re recognition only came afterwards. What I wanted to say is that uh, it is all too easy for us to criticize as, uh, when we are like sitting in our offices uh, and so on and so forth. So um, that is why I am not really want to criticize such people for all of their failings. Uh, now, uh, there is an elephant in the room that I would like to address and that is that it seems that her order did receive a lot of money while well, she was the head of the order and who knows how much afterwards. Uh, it does seem that nobody knows what happened with this money. I tried to do some search, but uh, from what I can say, uh, that is classified information. Now, there is a possibility that that money uh, was embezzled, but however, Embezzlement does not necessarily mean that it was put to a uh, bad purpose, just that it wasn't used for the purpose it was intended. Again, this is problematic and this is a perfectly valid uh, criticism of the issue. But perhaps, and this is just a, I'm not saying this is probable, but possible, perhaps that money was simply forwarded to Catholic Church at large uh, for the sake of, I don't know, founding missions, new churches, uh, charities, maybe it was embezzled for criminal purposes, who knows, I most certainly don't and I don't want to make any claims, but uh, it is fishy and uh, that needs to be given some proper response, I would think. However, uh, uh, with the, with, uh, as regards what Mother Teresa did, uh, regardless of any failings, in all probability, she has done much more than all of us saying uh, things in this video and listening to this video will do combined during our entire lives. Um, I'm just saying that we should take care before we accept those criticisms. A lot of these criticisms come from a very bad place, uh, from a place that would extremely rejoice at seeing Christians fail. And that is, um, and that is uh, problematic. I think that uh, such criticism uh, uh, needs to be discarded unless there is an, a very good reason not to do otherwise. Uh, these are just some of my thoughts. Uh, feel free to uh, share yours in the comments. But because this is sort of a controversial issue, uh, controversial issue, bear in mind that uh, there is a number of people who watch this channel who are Catholic and who do consider Mother Teresa Saint. I even if you level criticism, please keep, <laughs> uh, keep, keep, it at, uh, keep your head cool. There is no need for name calling or whatever. Just simply state the facts as you know them. That would be it. And I hope to see all of you in one of the next videos. Bye.